released by the TAT, the Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation. Uh, we have just one hour, so as moderator, I want I want to make sure I don't take too much of the time. Uh, but the key element that I like to raise is that the focus of this whole event, uh, obviously, is on resilient food systems. But we are looking at the technology brokerage dimension. My name is Kwesi Atakra, and I am with the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture. I also serve within the clearinghouse of the Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, TAT. We have two uh, people who would be sharing opening remarks and that's meant to set the scene. Uh, once again, I want to emphasize this is technology brokerage for a resilient food system in Africa. So I'm going to call um, Dr. Martin Fregene. Uh, Martin is a director for agriculture and agro-industry at AFDB, the African Development Bank. Uh, that is a, a key uh, funder for this initiative called TAT. And um, so Martin, let me give you the floor uh, to give us your opening remarks. Um, thank you very much, Kwesi. And it's a pleasure to give the opening remarks at this um, meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know that in the last four years, approximately, Africa's agriculture has been facing tremendous challenges. From the, from the pandemic, to low cost, to climate change, there has been big changes and big impacts on yields of African farmers. In the last three years, at least, there has been a big difference of up to 50% in yield. But fortunately, the CGIER centers have developed technologies that can help us overcome those big variabilities and, and build resilience into African agriculture. The bank has been funding for the last three years also technologies for African agricultural transformation that we'll be hearing more about this morning. This platform, this program has contributed immensely to helping Africa adapt to climate change and adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic and adapt to low cost through dissemination, widespread dissemination at scale of climate and adapted varieties. Also through introduction of low emission, low carbon emission, protein production like aquaculture and also livestock. And lastly, through water efficient irrigation, that has really helped African farmers boost their yields. I will leave you with three examples before I stop. The first is wheat in Sudan. Sudan is a big importer of wheat. Wheat is the number one food item. In the last three years, Sudan has doubled its wheat production simply by producing 65,000 tons of certified seeds of five heat tolerant varieties, distributing them to farmers and planting 294,000 hectares of wheat. Sudan's wheat harvest in 2019-2020 was the largest ever, 1.1 million tons of wheat. The same story can be said also for maize. Drought tolerant maize distributed by tax to farmers in Zambia and Kazimabwe and planted on 864,000 hectares was the reason why the impact of droughts was not felt so heavily that season in, in Southern Africa. And thirdly, we all know the big success story of aquaculture in DRC, in Nigeria, in Egypt. Aquaculture is becoming an alternative source of low carbon, low emission, you know, and protein production. We have succeeded in Sudan, in Zambia, in Zimbabwe with these crops. Now it's time to replicate it, to expand the frontiers of tax and to succeed in every single country and in all the nine priority commodities. And we can do that. That is why I'm so happy that this meeting is taking place where we can brainstorm on how we can keep moving forward. The bank also is, and IFAD has started the financing facility for food and nutrition in Africa. This is a fund that will mobilize a billion dollars next two years 
to support TAT with grants to support countries who want to participate in the TAT program with loans and to support the private sector involved in these sectors with loan guarantees. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Africa's time. Africa can indeed adapt its agriculture to climate change. Africa can indeed raise productivity. Africa can indeed become a powerhouse in agricultural production globally. Thank you very much. And back to you, um, Kwesi. Thank you so much, uh, Martin, for making those important elements and linking the role of the bank into this whole process. And I want to call on Dr. Kenton Dashil. Uh, Ken is the Deputy Director General uh, at the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture. And he is in charge of partnerships for delivery. Kenton, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Kwesi. And uh, Martin, thank you so much for that uh, very inspiring opening remarks. We are together at the AGR side event on technology brokerage for resilient food systems in Africa. And I want to focus on the two words, technology and brokerage. Technology is the use of science to invent useful things to solve problems. And brokerage is one who acts to do brokerage, and it includes the processes and the mechanisms uh, to be an intermer uh, interme intermediary or to distribute things. So we're looking for science-based innovations and technologies that can help solve the problems so that we can have a more resilient food system in Africa. As we look at this, there are are organizations and people that have in-depth knowledge about technologies. These are science-based things that can solve problems for our food systems in Africa. And the other group of people are those, uh, people and organizations are those uh, that need these technologies and innovations to solve those problems. And this side event is all about uh, describing how the Technologies for African Agriculture Transformation, uh, T-A-A-T, and we usually just say TAT, as Martin and Kwesi have already done, uh, how they are providing this brokerage service um, here in Africa. Now, I just have two requests for the participants of our meeting today. First, I would like everyone to take note on how you can become a partner in TAT. If you are a technology provider, if you have knowledge about technologies, you can help us in TAT by making these technologies available. And if you are one of those that need these technologies, you're a farmer or your government leader, et cetera, leader of a project that's uh, helping to transform African agriculture, take note on how you can participate in this program. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome your suggestions on how TAT can be a better broker for technologies in Africa. Kwesi, thank you very, very much for giving me just an opportunity to say a few, few comments and back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kenton. Um, and uh, I just want to re-emphasize the two words that uh, you expanded on, the word technology. Technology is part of the solution, um, but obviously it is not the only thing, technology by itself needs to get somewhere. And that's where you brought in brokerage. That brokerage is also a key element in terms of how do you link the technology from where it is developed all the way to how it is uptaken. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we, in this meeting, we also want to engage participants uh, very actively. Um, so I want to encourage all of us to make use of our chat box. If we have any, uh, questions, please go ahead and uh, put them in the chat box as we go on with the process. Um, but having said that, we are going to run a poll, um, uh, an opening poll, just to pitch where we stand with regard to the, the, the brokerage uh, issue, technology brokerage issue. So I would request the technical facilitator uh, to put the first poll uh, on the screen for us, please.
Ataye, can you help? Is the poll coming on? Yes, I've been able to put the poll in the chat box and the uh, responses will be coming in in the chat box on the platform. Okay. Um, can I then request everybody, please take a look at the chat box. Um, I don't see it in my chat box, so I don't know. The, I'm not sure if people are seeing the poll in their chat box. I was expecting it would be able to come on the screen. My chat box, yeah, Ify is also saying she hasn't seen it. So I don't think it is working. Our technical facilitator. Well, basically I wouldn't go on on, on this because of time. Um, the issue we wanted to address through the first poll is that this concept of technology brokerage is so far not very clear to many actors in the agriculture research for development space. You know, we, we use the word, but the question is what does it really mean and what does it entail? So the first poll was to see whether people agree with this statement. And, and that there is need for greater clarification and grounding uh, to be effective. Uh, I would be bold to say, I am sure if the poll had worked, uh, we would see that most people agree that that concept is not very clear and we need to be a bit more clear in terms of clarifying what exactly it is. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I will suggest we move on straight into the heart of the matter. And this is going to be the panel presentations. Um, and the focus of the panel presentations is on the same theme of this event, which is technology brokerage for a resilient food system in Africa. Um, the first presentation will be given by uh, Innocent Musidiamana. Innocent is the head of the clearing house of TAT. And the clearing house has a big responsibility in terms of uh, managing technology brokerage and engagement with countries in relation to TAT uh, technologies. So, Innocent, you have 10 minutes and the floor is open for you. to Martin. Go ahead, Innocent. We can we can see your screen. We can't hear you. Are you muted? So far, and where we are heading as uh, on agenda of to transform agriculture on the court, on the continent. So indeed, as I uh, was said, we have uh, uh, these proven technologies that have been developed by a consortium of uh, different CG uh, centers and uh, uh, other specialized institution. The main is to bring this technology into the hands of million of farmers to be able to double productivity and uh, by 2025, able to reach 40 million use, uh, accessing to this uh, uh, high yielding varieties uh, and also uh, quality breeds and uh, fingerlings as to address the productivity uh, gap on the continent. So uh, I think that's, uh, as you are already aware, uh, the TAT is structured on, on nine commodities and, uh, and six enablers. As uh, you will see, uh, each commodity will lead institutions as a uh, technology developer from uh, rice, high yielding uh, climate uh, varieties, maize, elite water efficient varieties, uh, where they, as uh, Martin said, especially uh, uh, the uh, wheat that has really uh, made a big change in terms of productivity uh, due to the 
heat tolerant uh, wheat variety in, in, South, in Sudan and Ethiopia. These are proven technologies that are already set in, uh, 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 by this uh, lead institution. To achieve this productivity will only uh, achieve if we combine it with these enablers, how do we uh, set this uh, capacity building throughout the deployment of this technology? How do we tackle the issue for low fertility of the soil, of the soil, the engagement with youth, and also the policy issues as uh, we look at today, uh, technology deployment across the continent. So as my colleague Questi said, that the technology brokerage, as you look at it uh, at this level, we look uh, at different uh, four steps. And uh, the four steps uh, start as uh, you will uh, look at to the uh, technology profiling, uh, bringing uh, technology users, uh, developers, and the government, private sector together as we facilitate this whole process in the brokering of this technology and then deploy technology to the farmer. So the approach that uh, we are doing at that program is uh, uh, what we, the tool that we are using uh, in this uh, brokerage and the deployment, we are using the technology toolkit. As I described this technology, this highly uh, the, uh, varieties, for example, on uh, rice or so the heat tolerant varieties uh, of wheat, we not achieve this productivity until we look at the bundle of technology don't kick together. What is the, uh, the fertility issue? How do we address the water? How do we address the weed? How do we uh, look at the pool factor in terms of marketing? and the financing so that the whole entire bundle technology pulling together a technology toolkit are able to address this productivity and link it to the market as you promote the uh, food system on the continent and bringing on board uh, the, uh, the resilient agriculture on the continent. So the four uh, step, as I said, will bring together the government, private sector, and development partners as we source the fund to, uh, uh, to this technology deployment across the continent. So the step to one is profiling these technologies, putting them together, accessible, and then try to go as these technologies are proven in the agroecologic zone, we be replicated to other agroecologic zone, adjusted to the local context, and then work of the government, the third stage, and the development partners as how we integrate this technology into the programs under preparation or program uh, under uh, design process so that we are able to work together in this uh, partnership to deploy this technology and being accessible to farmers. So the four stage are uh, combining the, 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 the brokerage uh, part. One, uh, we have already 114 technology identified ready for the next users. And the 100 have already been uh, profiled and uh, put in the database of, uh, of uh, that uh, uh, database. And I will ask my colleagues as uh, we end the session to share with my uh, our audience the links that lead to the, all this uh, technology catalog that are, are easily accessible so that our audience can really have access to this technology and use as you go forward in this agenda of technology transformation on the continent. So they have already said that this adjustment of technology to the local context and so we work now in 29 countries across the continent as we deploy uh, this technology in different agroecologic zone on different on these uh, uh, commodities as uh, presented uh, here. And then, uh, as I already uh, said, we are working closely with uh, the bank, IFAD, and the World Bank. So uh, the 
see the, the, the initial fund that were provided by the bank was to uh, facilitate and show that this concept is possible they, uh, and this uh, as we deploy this technology. Now we go far, uh, to go faster and reach more farmers on the continent. We need to work closely with uh, uh, development partners, especially as we work in the design of the, this program. So the third program will provide the technical assistance to the countries in the design of this program as bringing together all this expertise in design appropriate and the resilient uh, agriculture as uh, uh, we, uh, we avail the climate smart technology to the different countries as accessing to this proven technology on, 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 on the continent. So, so far we are working with the, the bank and uh, uh, designing a supporting country, designing program, integrating the technology as uh, we go, but also providing the technical assistance in the uh, implementation process as replicating this technology to the large scale in other countries. So I will not go far much on the achievement as uh, we have been uh, said so far, uh, the, the, as you see for the last three years, as you, you see the, the, the increase of productivity as bundling of this technology uh, as a package in different countries, uh, being wheat and the, uh, maize, uh, all the potato, rice, aquaculture, small livestock, it will have this example that we need to take to large scale on the continent so that we can really transform this continent. The only thing I want to add on as uh, moving forward as a lesson learned uh, as uh, we implemented this program is the component of the importance of uh, the conditional environment, the policy component. Because the, as we promote this proven technology at the country level and the regional level, we need to create this conditional environment to allow the transboundary cross of these breeds, uh, fingerlings and uh, high yielding varieties to be able access to the uh, community. So we'll be achieved until we help countries addressing this uh, uh, bottleneck in terms of policy as a policy enabler that you have at the third program to facilitate this progress. Uh, brokerage. So this is some of the achievement as uh, we look uh, forward, as we train farmers, we reach the, we facilitate the uh, farmers uh, outreach and see this technology through the uh, massive campaign, but also this example of Togo where uh, we work with private sector, they are investing uh, into the processing, adding value of cassava. This is an example that where we bring on board the private sector so moving forward, as I said, is to look at this uh, regional uh, context and the work uh, uh, on the bottleneck that are really uh, working toward the to regional harmonization on, of, of regulation for improved across border uh, uh, of uh, seed, fertilizer, and the agriculture food, as we look at the uh, resilient agriculture and also uh, improve, uh, food system whereby we look to this uh, technology as moving forward, uh, what uh, information in terms of digital solution on marketing, uh, distribution of the cold chain and the moder modernization of safety. So this integrated food system technology will lead also to look at the whole entire food system as starting from the increased productivity by accessing to proven technology, but also on the post harvest marketing and distribution part of it. So that's how we can achieve the, uh, the transformation of the continent. So we call all of you working together and this is really a, 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 an agenda together we can uh, achieve as a, a thought that will contribute to that, to that as we work together on this imperative ending uh, hunger and malnutrition using proven technology on our continent in our lifetime, that will be a right legacy moving forward. And we have good example that we need to really replicate at a scale and, and working together will be possible. Thank you very much. Over to you, Pesi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Innocent. Uh, it's been very useful uh, to give us a sense of what technology brokerage implies or, or involves. 
then you highlighted four key areas. You said technology profiling. First of all, identify where the technologies are. What do they really? Um, so having that is a key part of it. And then you also talked about the technology uh, toolkit or the bundling of technologies. In other words, you know, single technologies may not by themselves address the big challenge because you've got to see the technology in the context of the reality. So it requires bundling. Sometimes three or four technologies are bundled together to solve a particular challenge. So going through that and developing these two kits, which is kind of like a basket of options is very important. And then the third thing you talk about is the importance of now integration of these technologies into programs, including programs of countries and, and other development partners in countries, et cetera. And that's a very critical part a uh, very important part of the whole process. And then of course, in the final analysis, we're talking about realization on the ground, implementation, assessing impact, and those sort of things. Thank you very much. You've also highlighted that there are actors and those actors include private sector, they include youth, they include women. And of course, the big focus is the smallholder uh, farmers and other medium level farmers that we, we work with. So having said that, let's move straight to the second presentation, and that will be uh, by Ifi. Ifi Umuna is the co-CEO of a program called Nourishing Africa. And Nourishing Africa is actually a network of agripreneurs, um, which has membership across the continent. Uh, so Ifi would be sharing with us her perspectives coming in from the private sector in relation to technology uh, brokerage. So let's have uh, the presentation of Ifi and Ifi over to you, please. Thank you, Kwesi. And thank you to all the speakers prior to. Um, it was quite enlightening to hear about the great work that TAT is doing, TAAT is doing. Um, and I'm going to try and tie up quickly um, some information as well as share some of the experiences of Nourishing Africa as well as its entrepreneurs when it comes to technology brokerage. Um, so the perspective from the private sector. Um, starting off, we're going to discuss the importance of agtech innovation followed by some insights and then the role of uh, entrepreneurs when it comes to agriculture and food, when it comes to tech and innovation. And starting off, uh, I think it's important to note the critical need for technology brokerage uh, within the agriculture and food space. We know that we've seen high and unprecedented input costs, asymmetry when it comes to information and fragmented value chains. We've seen low productivity, um, and we've seen a range of different hurdles that entrepreneurs, smallholder farmers um, that are facing, and this has only been exacerbated by COVID-19. Um, but prior to COVID-19, we really saw that there was a growing trend of technology being used in other sectors, such as transportation, retail, energy, software development, and the likes. And we saw that this was really being pushed by the youth. Uh, when you look at hubs and innovation hubs, acceleration hubs, tech hubs, uh, they were driven um, by youth across the continent. Um, and we saw some exciting business models that were emerging, such as Cow Tribe, which is essentially an Uber for vets uh, in Ghana, where last mile, um, smallholder farmers can, using a, um, a USSD code, uh, request for veterinary services and vaccinations. We also seen Twiga in Kenya who leverage tech um, to connect the fruit, uh, the fruit ecosystem to uh, both the rural and urban settings as well. So for us, we always ask ourselves, who leads digital transformation within a company? Is it the CEO, is it the CTO, or is it COVID-19? And unfortunately for most uh, organizations, it was COVID-19. Um, but this is an opportunity that we believe can transform the agriculture and food space, whether it's through uh, the use of technology uh, with agricultural inputs or crop production or big data or processing. There are so many ways in which technology can be harnessed uh, to scale and improve uh, the operations as well as the business models of agribusinesses across the continent. Um, and we've seen that COVID-19 has brought new challenges to entrepreneurs in particular, such as disengagement of staff, um, loans, repayments being stifled, 
uh, food waste. And we've really seen that there's an urgent need um, for the ecosystem at large to provide support to agri-food entrepreneurs through access to information and resources, knowledge tools, financing, and ecosystem support, most of which can be done using technology and information. So for us at Nourishing Africa, this is what we do. Our mission is to drive the profitable and sustainable growth of the sector by attracting, empowering, equipping, and connecting young agri-food entrepreneurs. Um, and for us, our vision is really to be food secure as a continent and net exporters of food to the world. And we do this through three key functions, the hub, which has a range of data and tools, um, resources and information necessary for entrepreneurs to have access to, it's free. Um, we also have a membership portal as well, where we engage or we've created a community for these agripreneurs to engage with one another, learn with one another, one another partner, um, and try and help each other's challenges because we know uh, that entrepreneurship is a lonely journey, but it doesn't have to be. It's important to find a community. Um, we engage in knowledge and capacity building as well. And as I said, with the membership benefits, we provide access to funding opportunities, marketplace. Um, we also ensure that our members are able to connect with one another, uh, free advertising for their businesses and opportunities to showcase what they're currently doing. All of which is online um, using uh, technology as well. I think one thing I, I noticed previously with Innocent, what he was saying was uh, things like technology toolkits and assessing what is needed um, through technology brokerage is something that I think would uh, be perfect for uh, Nourishing Africa in terms of assessing how the, the members are utilizing their technology and what can be done to scale and to uh, increase their productivity. And we also have capacity building. For us, we know that entrepreneurs have a range of questions that we often can't ask or they don't have access to experts to ask. Uh, so we provide this um, facilitation of experts to entrepreneurs, as well as our flag flagship uh, networking event, which is First Thursday, which brings entrepreneurs together to connect with one another for us to share upcoming opportunities that we believe they should tap into as well. After during COVID-19, we quickly realized that the entrepreneurs that we were working with had really uh, had business models that were not resilient that could not withstand the shocks of COVID-19 or any future shocks in that sense. So we created the Nourishing Africa Entrepreneur Support Program in partnership with the MasterCard Foundation and USADF, which is a four-step program, most of which is online, um, to provide a diagnostic tool for self-assessment. We provide a training um, on various aspects of um, agribusiness, as well as providing small loans and ongoing support for these entrepreneurs to really put in um, the work and to put in the effort that they have stated that they want to, to do. And when we look at our membership, we, uh, we have members from farm to fork, all the way from research to food preparation and blogging. And we support over 1,100 members across 34 uh, countries in Africa. And when we talk about business models in particular, and this is something that Questy has also discussed, um, the use of technology, data, and innovation and assessing what is needed um, from an agribusiness point of view as an operational point of view and seeing how we can engage in technology brokerage um, aimed at really scaling agriculture and food across the continent. So to close off, I have some practical steps that I would love for you to consider. The first is building partnerships across uh, various food ecosystems, putting private sector at the center of transformation um, and making sure that we use technology to leapfrog but it needs to be affordable and accessible and investing in building talent for the sector. Um, we know that the average age of someone engaged in agriculture and food space is 60. So getting youth involved is not a want, it's a need. Um, and unlocking catalytic and patient capital and leveraging platforms such as Nourishing Africa and TAT to build capacity building, linkages and technology brokerage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ify. Um, this is very, very interesting. It's, it gives us an example of how this brokerage is taking place. And I like the four action steps that you concluded concluded with. I think that's something that will help us round up this uh, whole event. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank those of you who have already put in the chat box, um, basically introducing yourself, who you are. Uh, but then also, if you have questions to any of the panelists, please, uh, put the question in the chat box and we will find time to get to that. 
At this point, I'd like to call our third panelist. Uh, he is Dr. Yonga Munyaradzi, um, who is the leader of the TAT Compact on MAPES. Um, Yonga, over to you, please. Uh, thank you, Kwesi. Uh, hello, everyone. In the next few minutes, I'm going to uh, talk about the role of TAT maize compact in technology brokerage for food system resilience in Africa. I hope the story that I'm going to talk about TAT maize will show the strong partnerships that we formed to broker technologies and deliver them to the farmers for impact. I would quickly uh, start by um, mentioning some of the objectives under TAT Maze Compact that uh, were guiding us in, uh, in this um, uh, implementation. Um, we started with the adoption of new technologies, and here we're deploying a, a new elite climate smart varieties. Uh, these obviously block, brokered from um, uh, CG centers, uh, private sector and uh, national programs. Uh, productivity, the major aim was to increase productivity of the maize uh, in, along the maize value chain, uh, complementing the elite climate smart varieties with good agricultural practices. Uh, seed systems uh, to enhance uh, uh, consistent supply of um, high quality seeds, so we had to enhance uh, the seed systems, working with various partners, uh, National Seed Association and, and, and seed companies, and fostering market linkages to, um, uh, for input and output uh, uh, markets, as well as wealth creation for those involved in the maize value chain. And also gender mainstreaming there in terms of increasing women and youth participation uh, was uh, one of the key objectives there and digital agriculture uh, for improving access to information uh, on good agricultural practices and also attracting youth and eventually to commercialize um, agriculture by um, uh, using mechanized implements to reduce, to make uh, efficient operations and also reduce treasury. And this would also um, deliberate effort to um, attract youth to the maize value chain. And I would say these um, technology brokerage and delivery helped us to achieve the, the above objectives. And uh, starting with the uh, ecosystem of partners, um, I would want to say um, uh, we had investor, the FDB, uh, and also ATF and IATA coordinating the activities uh, of the maize value chain. But I want to quickly say um, we are working with NAS, CG uh, technology providers, you know, for to broker these technologies, especially uh, the maize varieties uh, from their programs, and also even supervision of some activities in country. Worked with commodity association, farmer groups, and so on uh, for implementation um, uh, using these uh, technologies on the. Uh, farmer level, and uh, seed companies and private sector, uh, you know, the development of the uh, uh, seed systems, supply of quality seed um, was done using, uh, working with the uh, seed companies and their associations. And uh, as I said, finance and credit providers as well as the ICT platform. And also we're working with other TAT um, um, compacts and enablers to make sure that we achieve uh, the delivery of uh, the broker technologies. Uh, giving some examples of uh, the achievements uh, that we managed through the partnerships to scale out uh, climate smart varieties. Um, most of these varieties, as I said, were brokered from the pro uh, programs like breeding programs like WEMA, the Drought Tego Hybrids, the DTMA of CIMIT, IHA products, and the NAS breeding programs. And uh, these were also combined things like uh, striker resistance, uh, disease tolerance, especially MLN, and nutrition, and even fulamwem uh, control using potential GOC treatment. 
with in partnership with um, 40 city companies uh, that were engaged, we managed to um, scale out uh, 24,000 uh, 24, metric tons of seed, high quality certified seed out of 48 uh, uh, climate smart varieties. And even we also deployed um, uh, basic seed. And this was done in partnership with uh, foundation seed entities like uh, Quali Basic Seed. And this were uh, the varieties, the seed that were scaled out benefited 2.4 million farmers. And this, this was possible working with the private sector, the seed companies uh, who were able to do that, even including distribution of small parks for farmers to do on trials. And these pictures are showing some of the seed companies that we're working with to be able to scale out those um, uh, technologies and even the NAS, the Cairo in Kenya, doing some activities on the ground showing good productivity. And coming to technical and stewardship uh, support to farmers on good agriculture practices, um, the field demos and demonstrations and, and field days were conducted and even workshops to be able to support farmers uh, with good agricultural practices. And um, this really ended up uh, with uh, improved yields. We can see here tractors, people in the field assessing of, uh, the efficacy of Fortenza Jewel. You would also see um, in Uganda, um, USTA, which is the uh, Uganda Seed Trade Association, um, training farmers on good agricultural practices. Um, in the in the collaboration that was happening on the ground, and this resulted in um, farmers achieving the productivity that we aimed to to achieve. I would also want to talk about effective uh, um, public private partnerships that uh, helped to um, deploy Fortenza Jewel um, to fight polamium. This work was done in. Uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe over two seasons, where private sector seed companies dressed the seed or treated seed, maize seed with Fortenza Jewel for protection against fallamium. And this seed was distributed mainly to farmers, mainly through, through the government uh, programs of um, Zambia and Zimbabwe. And um, the productivity was enhanced. And in Zambia, yield advantage of 1.6 tons per hectare were achieved through using uh, Fortenza Jewel. And it also shows some of the pictures where um, FDB were monitoring some of the activities that we were doing on Fortenza Jewel. And this was a good um, um, partnership that uh, managed to uh, combat uh, for in those countries. Another thing that I need to highlight is the focus on women entrepreneurs. We're also working with uh, women uh, entrepreneurs to scale out these um, uh, climate smart varieties and um, other complementary agricultural technologies. Um, for example, uh, in Namburi Seeds, uh, the director, the owner is a lady and uh, she contributed to um, the seed that was scaled out in Tanzania uh, like uh, almost 13% of uh, that seed uh, came from uh, the, the Namburi seeds. And also engaged women and youth groups uh, in Western Kenya to be able to establish demos and few days so that other farmers would come and learn good agricultural practice and imp improve productivity. We also um, fostered um, market systems and value addition through the maize value chain. Um, to do um, agriculture as a business. So there's a lot of uh, faci uh, linkages with input output um, um, markets like fertilizer suppliers. The Anka borrower scheme in Nigeria also supported farmers uh, uh, doing maize. And also the farmers were linked to grain off takers uh, so that they get uh, uh, the market with uh, good prices for their surplus production once um, we improved the productivity. And in terms of value addition, the, the maize grain process by uh, 
millers and so on to make sure that there's value addition and the flour, maize flour that uh, is, is a higher value than the maize grains. And I would want to say maybe the strong uh, partnerships uh, uh, formed under uh, the maize value chain helped to build a resilient food system and business through TAT. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yunga. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you would agree with me that our three panelists have been very helpful for this process. Uh, Inusan started giving us clarity in terms of how TAT sees the whole issue of technology brokerage and also showed some of the specific uh, achievements that TAT has been able to generate and talking about the importance of partnerships. Uh, we had Ife coming in from the private sector perspective, but going beyond that, talking a little bit about the models they are using also in relation to the Nourishing Africa uh, initiative, which, which is very complementary to the kind of things that are happening within TAT for a partnership opportunity there. And then finally, we've got a very specific example of how things play out within specific TAT compact, in this case, MACE, that Yonga has shared with us. Um, I want us to now use a bit of time for the participants. I'm sure some of you have uh, questions that you might want to, to raise. Um, so I'll ask um, Atai, uh, who has been helping me looking at the chat box to see if there are any questions that are in the chat box. Um, if there aren't questions and you really want to raise a point, uh, please show by raising your hand and uh, we'll give you an opportunity to do that. But first of all, Atai, can you take the floor and let us know if there are any questions that might need to be addressed? Okay, thank you very much, Koisi. We have ju just a question from um, Nadia Martinez, who is an agribusiness uh, consultant. And she says that rural entrepreneurs are well positioned to provide services to farmers if they have access to agricultural technologies, that is machinery, which is more cost effective than each farmer purchasing it. It also creates business opportunities for young people who can build service enterprises. Challenges include access to the right technology and financing options. Any successful examples from others on this? Thank you. Very good. So that's, that's a, a broad issue uh, brought in there. And uh, I don't know if, he, if you would be able to comment on, on that point, um, whether there is any experience in that regard. Thank you. Um, I think for us, what we have seen, let me switch on my camera. What we have seen across the board is that um, we need agripreneurs in rural settings to come together. Um, so what Nadia is saying makes perfect sense, um, but we need some form of coalition or some form of association where this technology can be deployed and used in a community setting. Um, so for us at Nourishing Africa, I think what we've started working with is with youth associations to try and really leverage their associations to amplify their voices and their needs um, based on, on knowing that individually, it's very, very, very hard to support rural farmers, youth, um, anyone in the agricultural space. But collectively, it is much easier. And through the Nourishing Africa a Youth Coalition, um, that we're currently building up. We're trying to ensure that we can um, engage in, in uh, financing and technology, as Nadia has said, on a wider spectrum for entrepreneurs and for youth in rural settings through youth associations. Thank you, Ife. Um, rural entrepreneurs are definitely uh, crucial in this whole process. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Yonga, um, to also share his thoughts. How is this sort of addressed in the context of the maize compact? Yeah, thanks, Kwesi. It's a, it's a good question or a discussion point. Uh, under maize, Tata Tata maize, we discovered that uh, farmer aggregation is key for us to be able to uh, efficiently use, um, to do mechanized operations uh, for economies of scale. So the aggregation is quite key and they even... Um, 
uh, ICT platforms can be utilized to aggregate farmers so that we have big blocks of fields that we can use uh, planters, you know, other things and uh, effectively. Um, um, and and um, I've seen also to uh, agree with the uh, what was put on the chart is to say uh, even uh, enterprises in the rural areas can also help. We've worked with uh, community-based organizations and they also help us implement these activities of uh, delivery of technologies to farmers. So it's, uh, it's, it works as well in the maize value chain. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm just scanning through some of the introductions on the chat box. I see that we have Mel who will watch with us. And uh, Mel is the regional director for Sasakawa Africa Association. Um, Mel, I just want to just tap into your mind because the Sasakawa Association, the work that you do, brokerage and brokering is a key element of that. Would you take a minute or, or, or two just to, to share uh, some thoughts from your own end on just how crucial this element is? Oh, probably, probably you don't have um, access to speak. Um, so in that case, I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, I did not clear that from the technical moderator. So, okay. Let me then pass on to Innocent. I mean, based on what we have heard from Yonga and also from, from Ifi, uh, and looking at the infrastructure that is set up within TAT. Um, how do you see the whole role of rural entrepreneurs uh, as well as youth entrepreneurs being addressed in the context of this brokerage dimension of TAT? So two key elements, you know, there's been a lot of talk about private sector, but also rural entrepreneurs, you know, can also be seen as private sector in a way, you know, they are also private sector. And then we have the youth dimension. How, how does it play out in that? Just very briefly. Thank you, Chrissy. Uh, a, a quick one, maybe I will give you an example uh, where the youth played a major role in terms of uh, uh, brokerage and uh, contributing to the deployment of technology uh, in the intervention. So a specific example goes to Zambia, whereby by bringing uh, youth together, training them on skills in terms of technology on aquaculture, especially on uh, post harvests, uh, handling and, and also the growing or fast growing disease resistant seed of uh, fish that has resulted really at the youth becoming uh, entrepreneur in terms of uh, in, in, in Zambia. And as we talk now, uh, they are able to have the, the return of uh, between $500 to $600 individually. And then as they were, they are. Uh, supporting, uh, making a business around uh, the fish uh, production and also the post harvest as in their community. So this is really a good example and also other parts of the continent where they are making uh, a role, bigger role as uh, facilitating uh, access to this technology because they are, they are the enemies in terms of access to this uh, technology tool. So that's Rio, some think uh, that we think this uh, transformation will happen until our youth are uh, very well organized, becoming entrepreneur and making a, a, a return out of uh, this uh, technology that are deployed out of, uh, across the continent. So this is really a while I yeah. that. So That's I saw amazing. one question from Kaping uh, Regina, uh, as I uh, was asking what who have been doing in terms of tax and especially uh, supporting countries uh, in this uh, brokerage, uh, facilitating uh, 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 for tax. So I, the one of the lessons learned, uh, 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 Regina, is that 
as we engage with countries, especially uh, deploying these technologies to be integrated to country programs, the first thing as a third program ecosystem, we need to understand the country needs, the country challenges, priorities, and then we respond, we come up with this uh, uh, proven technology to respond to the real challenge the countries are facing. So that has really uh, been a game changer so that now countries are really uh, receptive to our, uh, our, our offer in terms of uh, contributing to the uh, country uh, transformation agenda. So that's bringing together this ecosystem of uh, that compact uh, and understanding fit well with the country context that has really led to country be able to accommodate this technology integrated to country program. Now we accompany them in the implementation. So, so far 22 countries are being engaged as you work forward. Over to you. Thank Chris. you so much. Thank you so much, Inusan. That's very good, giving a very practical example in how this thing is actually playing out in the country by country context. Um, do we, are we able to run the closing poll? And I, I think because of time, we probably would have to drop the idea, but what we wanted to run in the closing poll was basically to assess the way in which this discussion that we have had may have opened uh, the door for, you know, a better understanding and better appreciation of the crucial importance of this technology brokerage process really identifying these key actors and ensuring that we don't just go on developing more and more technologies, which are not changing anything on the ground. So I think that's a key challenge that we all need to be able to, to focus on uh, moving forward. Um, and uh, the actors that were mentioned, private sector, well, of course, the first actor that I was mentioned included government, being able to link with government, seeing how this technology will help the government to achieve what they themselves want to achieve for the country. We talked about private sector, the role of private sector in that process as part of the intermediation uh, group of agencies. We talked about the youth, that if you don't engage youth in this, you're not really going to reach your targets. And of course, we talked about women, and finally, we've talked about the critical importance of the rural entrepreneurs, rural entrepreneurs, uh, not forgetting the smallholder farmers who are really working so actively to provide the food that we need. So I think that has been the key sense in terms of uh, what we've been able to do. Uh, because our time is so limited, we haven't been able to generate as much discussion. Uh, but I believe the key points uh, have been made. And moving forward, before I close, let me also say that within TAT, we are working with regional authorities in establishing what we call technology fairs at regional level. And the first of these uh, is going to be organized with CORAF and ECOWAS for Western Central Africa. And that is scheduled for the period, uh, the week of the 25th of October. So you will be hearing, if you have put your email in this chat box, you can be sure that you will be getting updates. So I want to encourage those of you who may not have put down your, your email, please do just introduce who you are and then put in the, 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 the email for, your, uh, for who you are. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we want to take a picture to show who was at this event. And I will therefore appeal to all of you to put on your cameras. Uh, please turn on your video. Uh, and then if you look in the top right hand corner. Oh, once again, I'm not sure the technical uh, element allows that. Um, if you look in the top right hand corner, you will see the, the view button and click on gallery. Yeah, okay, so that enables, okay. I, I realize now that it's only the facilitators and the panelists who have access to their video. So we cannot take the group photo. I apologize for that. 
but I think I just want to thank everybody, uh, all the participants who have been in this. I thank you all so much. And we look forward to further interaction. Please put your email in the chat box and we will continue to engage with you. Thank you speakers. Thank you all very much and bye-bye for now. Thank you.